So um, welcome Sarah Jane Brown. Sarah Jane is one of our professional artist mentors at Masterius and um, she's going to lead this demo. I've been pretty excited about this scene in particular. It's uh, gorgeous. And uh, so if you are new to our painting challenges, this is how it goes. We're going to, so Sarah Jane's gonna do a demo. You are welcome to paint along or just watch up to you. Feel free to put your questions in the chat or turn on your microphone and ask out loud. Um, either way is fine. And then we, we have a week to complete our paintings. What we love to do at Masterius is encourage you to make your own composition, paint it in your style, in your medium, so you don't have to make it look like Sarah Jane's, but you're welcome to if you'd like. Um, and then submit it for next week. We're going to come back here, same day, same time, same link, uh, for a, a view of everyone's artwork. And the way to submit it is e either to email it in um, or to post it on socials and hashtag Masters Painting Challenge. And I'll put those details in the chat. All righty. Sarah Jane. Let's get started. Tell us a little bit about um, your painting, your reference photo, how we're going to tackle it today. Okay, this was a bit of a challenge for me because generally speaking, I don't work from one single photo, <laughs> um, which is why the painting is kind of based loosely on the photograph, but it's quite different. Mm -hmm. I generally work from a variety of sketches photographs, experience of being out, sometimes some some in situ paintings. And then I kind of put all those together and I take elements of each um, and kind of rearrange them to, to make a, a painting. So generally speaking, I don't slavishly coffee, copy a photograph. It's not, not the way that I normally work. So actually this painting I did a little while ago and <laughs> trying to find, look back through my photos and find the, um, the, ref, the original reference was, uh, was interesting. <laughs> but, so I'm just gonna take bits and pieces and um, generally speaking, I use those things as a starting point. And once I get painting, I sort of let go of them and I just let the paint, paint take me on a journey. I just mm. kind of have fun with it. So That's anything good. could happen. <laughs> Oh, right. And you're painting in acrylic. Um, do you know, paint in acrylic today. So normally I paint in oils. Okay. Um, but I teach in acrylic generally just because it's much, especially when you've only got an hour, it's not very long to make a painting. So that's right. Uh, just drying time, I'm, I'm going to use acrylic today. Okay. Awesome. It means that I can layer things quickly. And the way that I normally work is to make multiple layers. So to do that in oils would be a bit of a challenge in an hour. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I, as everybody probably saw on the notes, I've used, I've just put out a double primary palette. I'm just using very basic acrylic paint. I've got a warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool red, and a warm and cool blue, and that's about it. And some burnt amber just to make nice darks for the for the rocks. Um, and and a bit of white. And that's it, really. Okay. So, um, Anything else you want to know? Um, the particular uh, colours? Particular colours. Um, I've got a lemon yellow, a cadmium yellow, a cadmium red, magenta is the mm -hmm. cool red, burnt ember for the dark. And then I've got um, cyan or cerulean might be an equivalent yeah. and, and ultramarine. Okay, beautiful. So warm and cool of each, basically. Yeah. But if you haven't got that, it doesn't matter. Whatever you've got, it's fine. <laughs> um, All right. Okay. Shall I get going? Yeah, I'll just mention, folks, um, if you aren't seeing uh, Sarah Jane's screen large, go to view in the top right corner. You can do side by side. Gallery uh, is how I have it, and it's nice and big. Just want to yeah. make sure you're and then you should have the little, and should have the palette then small. Okay, let's if see. If you want to see the palette, the palette. That's right. So you might have to scroll through if you put the view to side by side gallery, then um, you will see. Or actually, you can do side by side speaker, and then you'll just see Sarah Jane and the palette, and not everybody else. 
technology is marvelous and wonderful and uh, <laughs> all at the same time all right okay. how, how do you get started yeah talk us through your yeah plans. i start just by getting a colored ground on and because this image is quite cool colors but my painting was quite warm um i kind of like to start with a warm a warm ground even if it shifts in the process of painting mm. it just gives me somewhere to start and it will kind of give it a nice glow and gives you that mid value to start from so i'm just using a big flat brush and um I'm gonna take some Um, so this is something I had my mentorship group last night. We talked about color temperature um, between yeah. phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. I've heard people see them differently. Like for me, ultramarine is cooler than phthalo, but uh, I've heard that um, ultramarine is warmer than phthalo for others. What's your opinion? <laughs> warmer? Absolutely. Ultramarine is warm and uh, cyan or uh, cerulean uh, or phthalo are cool. And I guess my phthalo is a blue red shade, so that would warm it up. Yeah, right, I'm just, I'm literally just scrubbing it on. All right. <laughs> and and Which one is this? So this is a mixture of the warm, the warm yellow and the warm red. <laughs> and a bit of white just to um, But you could start with pink or blue or you know any ground. It's just getting a mid value on really. That's the and and sort of breaking the eye, getting the canvas, getting paint on. And I find the faster you do that. The more energy you put into it, the more it sort of sets you up for an energetic painting from the start. Mm. Sorry, knocking the camera. It's all good. Are you all still seeing Sarah Jane on the big screen? Let me know if that changes. Just gonna tighten this up a bit because it. Um, also, I never um, use a pencil or anything like that on my canvas. I like to start painting, even if that's drawing. I like to draw in paint rather than with anything else. Do mm -hmm. you draw on a colour or, or a particular colour? Usually just a slightly darker version of whatever I've used for the ground. That's what I'll do now. Okay. Um, are you using uh, a medium in your paint? Just, uh, no, I'm just using water. Okay. Again, just so that I didn't want to have any kind of uh, anything that everybody else wouldn't have at home or okay. I'll just try and keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Appreciated. We all have water. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like I say, normally if I was doing my own work, I might I might start just a sketch like this with acrylic, but then I would switch to oil. So mm. that involves a whole lot of other paraphernalia and mediums and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'm just gonna I've kind of got quite a high horizon, so that's always a good place to start.
Can you? Yeah, he can see it. Yeah, that looks great. I'm just just sort of simplify, just sketching out the proportions. Because if you get it wrong, it's easy just to, you know, rub it out and. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We are going to grab that reference photo for you guys here in a yeah. moment. Hopefully, well, hopefully you can see mine on the screen, but I guess you'll, uh, if you're painting along, you'll want to. Something a bit yeah, more. I'll pop it in the chat here. Yeah, and then on the on the reference photo, some of these rocks are kind of this one's like really central, which I didn't like, so I sort of I just moved them around and just basically used the reference to kind of get an idea of the shapes of the rocks without having to place them exactly where they are in the photo. Yeah, artistic license, absolutely. Yeah, so just thinking about where the the composition of this kind of flow of rock pool. I rarely find a reference photo that is good enough to paint as it is. I, I always yeah. move stuff around. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if you, I'm of the mind that if, if you can take a perfect photograph, you don't need to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. It's, but, it's, you know, the painting is, is about sort of reinterpreting what you see around you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the challenge of it. That's the pleasure of it is kind of making it your own. Oh, this one a bit bigger. I'm kind of mindful not to make them all the same size and shape. <laughs> feeling the way a bit. Is that cad red? Yeah, mm. it's, it's just that that's what I use for the ground. So like I say, I'm only sort of just figuring things out a little bit where things are going to go. And then I will start with sort of getting some darks in and I'm trying to find the reference photo to send out here. I'll get it to you right away. And you have a course coming up too with us, Sarah Jane Hay of Confident Color. Yeah. yeah. That's that's in February. So that's four. Uh, it's a weekend and it's four four consecutive weeks. Okay, yeah. And my mentorship group as well, which is starting on the 18th. So yes, okay. Soon. Next week, Wednesday, your mentorship group starts. You're working with aspiring artists. Yeah. That's awesome. Will this be your first group with us? Yeah. Cool. Very exciting. Yeah, that's great. And then your course is in uh, February 4th. It starts, um, and that is a Saturday, is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. For and then weeks. I think it's a couple of hours each Saturday for the four yeah. weeks. Three hours, uh, yeah, and four weeks, lovely. Confident color. Well, that's, I definitely have confidence in color. My, if anything, I need to kind of tamper it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, tell me a bit about confident color. What's your what's your philosophy on color? Everybody got one of these. The color wheel. Yes, I hope so. Everybody got one on their easel. Not stuck <laughs> in a drawer. It's no good in a drawer. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I think quite often people um, like have fun with color, but then they very easily kind of make a muddy brown mess, and they don't quite know how they've done it. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, or even you know, you might think that you've kind of mixed the right color, but then the nuances of being able to play with warm and cool, um, just to make your colors really sing. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, getting rid of all this. I'm going to try not to talk too much. <laughs> Is it hard to talk and paint at the same time? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's definitely a skill. Yeah. It is when you've only got an hour. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna right, try yeah. to... Right, so now I'm gonna just uh, get some darks, get some darks in. So for that, I use, I don't use black with my paintings. I know there's two schools of thought on that, um, but I find that using um, ultramarine, which is a dark warm blue, and burnt amber, which is basically a very desaturated dark red, if you if you um, thin it out. See how mm -hmm. dark that goes? Can, can see it on the palette? Yeah. Almost black. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. And so you can get a really good black from those two colours. But then because you've used um, a warm and a a cool in that the the blue and the the burnt umber the burnt umber is warmer than the blue and the, um because they're both dark pigments they make a really nice dense black but you can nuance it either way very easily just by adding a bit more blue or a bit more burnt umber so you can get really subtle color sh shifts in the darks which is really useful right um, all right everyone the reference photo is now in the chat there is a link to it and an image uh, in it. So you might not be able to see the image. So click the link and that will bring you to um, the reference photo. It's gonna look like a dog's dinner for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know it always starts messy. Someone was asking about your color wheel, and <clears throat> I think I have the exact same one. It's uh, Stadler. I'll put that in the chat. Yeah. You, there's, I think there's various different makes, but you can you can get them easily on or from art shops or on Amazon or mm -hmm. different. I guess different places in the world have different <laughs> different suppliers, but. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes I find cool and warm is shifted a little bit depending on the wheel. Yeah. Uh, may I ask you, you have used ultramarine blue or Payne's Grey? No Payne's Grey, ultramarine and burnt umber. Okay, thank you. Make the dark. it makes a really nice rich dark color without it being as you know if you use black or paints gray it's very easy to end up making sort of battleship gray painting <laughs> mm. or very kind of dense slightly flat yeah. color yeah you're right Um, question about the brand of brush you prefer for acrylic? Anything that isn't paint encrusted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a big believer in the brands don't matter. You just need something that does the job. Mm. And like, 
people can get really hung up on buying expensive brands of this and that if you're just you know especially when you're learning the problem I find I experience with teaching is that people spend all this money on materials and brushes and equipment and it's all expensive and then they're so frightened to mess it up that they don't actually use it oh yeah I'd rather you you just use you know cheap brushes or cheap paint or whatever just to practice just to get going just to get rid of your inhibitions and you know actually just yes. get stuck in you know that's right be prepared to to trash a brush or <laughs> mm -hmm. get thing get your paint all in, encrusted in something and you know just get messy and have a go yeah and use lots of paint um don't yeah. on paint or it affects your painting for sure yeah well just the quantity of paint that i don't know if you can see it on the yeah you know you can't make a painting without paint <laughs> you gotta squeeze plenty out and get going We have 63 artists on the call. That's great. Ah, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I probably should have told you that at the end. <laughs> Success. Yeah. What is that? I'm not sure. Phil. 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 Yeah. Hi, Phil. Hi, How are you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. I've been along to one of Sarah's classes in the studio. Brilliant. Oh, Phil. Hi, Phil. Hello. <laughs> I, it's all right. I've just worked out how to unmute myself. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. Yeah, so Sarah Jean has, um, she's a newer mentor here at Masterius. Uh, her mentorship group starts next week, and she has a course on confident color. Uh, if you're interested. Oh, I'll, I'll put the links in the chat if you want to take a peek. Uh, and the benefit is that we do everything like this on Zoom and live um, so that uh, there's always room and time for questions and interaction and, and we do everything in small groups. Um, the mentorship is in groups of up to eight artists, so it's nice and intimate. I'll grab those links. Okay. I just so you know, I'm putting some putting some light in now. So I've kind of got the background as the mid value. I sketched out with the, the darker red, just, just to kind of map things out, put in some dark sound, putting in the kind of light areas. And I can just start building from there then. Sarah, is it correct that I remember that you never use pure white in this sort of thing, even though it looks white, it's actually mixed with some of your yeah, I don't know if you can see the palette, but I'm yeah, I just very, make yeah, I can. But so you never use white until the final highlights, do you really, I think? Yeah, if you, because white is generally very opaque, when you're mixing, if you put, especially if you're using oils wet, which kind of keep moving. Yeah. If you put white on st straight away, you kind of, you've got nowhere to go with your values. That's it, you've got the lightest value right ever. Right in the middle That's and you can cool. kind of go out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it really, sh it shines. Uh, I already seen the light you're capturing. It's beautiful. So for those who might have missed it earlier, this is Sarah Jane Brown. She's one of our mentors at Masterius. She is demoing in acrylic. And this event uh, has a part two to it. Uh, so if you are painting along or if you're going to watch and paint later, uh, we are going to get back together next week. Same place, same time, same link with Sarah Jane. And we're going to look at everyone's paintings. Um, so at Masterius, we, we really encourage artists to, um, I mean, learning by copying is, is, is awesome. That's a really good way to learn. So you're welcome to do that. 
And if you would like, also, we encourage you to create your own composition, uh, your own format. Maybe you want to do it long instead of tall or square, and then paint it in your style, in your medium. And, um, and then we're going to look at everyone's paintings next week. So uh, we'll go through them and Sarah Jane can comment on, uh, on each one. It's really lovely to see everyone's unique style come through, to see the yeah. unique compositions and colors. Uh, it's, it's so great to see uh, the individuality coming out in each artist and how we paint differently and see things differently. I'll put in the chat how to share your painting if you want it to be part of uh, next Friday's event. I'll put that in the chat. Great. Sarah, can you please let us know which blues you're using or the worm in the cool? Can yeah. You uh, if you can, can you see my palette? Yes. Yeah. So okay. I've kind of laid the palette out. I, I kind of lay my palette out generally in the order of the color wheel. So. If I put this here, cool yellow, warm yellow, warm red, or ready orangey red. The camera's just a bit cooler red that's closer to violet, which is magenta. Um, can you move your camera a little can bit? Uh, can you see that? Your camera is a little bit off. Um, you might need to. Uh, it's a bit okay. hard to. Um, yeah, no, that might be then the best it is. Okay, no, it's fine. It's just if I move it up too hard, then it's going to get in the way of the... Oh, right, okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the way that it's laid out, if you can see the paint on the palette, yeah, um, um, is basically in the same order as the colour wheel. Um, so that then, you know, because when you're painting, then you know that the closer things together the closer the colours are together, the more saturated and pure the, the mix is going to be. And if you want to desaturate something, the further away it is, right. uh, or you're going to get a, a more neutral colour. So, mm. uh, so to answer the question about the blues, um, cyan and ultramarine, if you can see that on the palette. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> a little tiny box. Yeah. But they're, they're side by side. So. Are you mixing both at the moment? I, I'm sorry, I can't see which blue you're mixing with, but. Um, I used uh, ultramarine <laughs> to get this more lavendery color. Okay, thanks. And I think I used cyan for this with a bit of white, with the gray that I've kind of got mixed up here from, from where I put the dark in. We're at 30 minutes, Sarah Jean. Just ah, okay. <laughs> Don't ask me anything now. Hmm. Okay. I'm trying to, there's a question about the underpainting and I'm trying to remember what you said the colors were. Uh, I just, I just mixed up an orange basically from the warm yellow and the warm red. The red cad and the yellow cad. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to take cool, cool yellow. Ooh, <laughs> bit of green in the mind. And cool red, which is the magenta. And that will make quite a sort of desaturated orange. So, in contrast to the orange of the two warm ones, plus there's a bit of grey sludge still on my brush. So that's making it nice and desaturated. And if you can see that. Mm -hmm. and the white. All right, if you're having a hard time seeing the palette, go to the top right corner of your Zoom window where it says view. Click on view and go to side by side speaker. And then you'll see the palette on the right and uh, Sarah Jane on the larger screen on the left. So I've basically used it sort of 
made a very desaturated grayed out orange with some white and a bit of just this kind of distant sand. And generally when I'm kind of using a colour, if I'm putting it in one place, I try and find other places to put it while I've got it on my brush. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move that. I tend to like using just flat, flat synthetic brushes because they're so versatile. So I haven't actually changed brushes at all. <laughs> like these kind of just a synthetic. A, yeah, beautiful, about a one inch. This one is three quarters of an inch, I think. Mm -hmm. But they're very versatile. You can cover a lot of ground very quickly, but you can also, you know, using the brush on its side, you can get, you know, very fine lines or you can just kind of do little dots so you can you can kind of get a lot done with mm -hmm. oh <laughs> that was an accident <laughs> oh what happened ha happy accident i'm going accident. with it that's a bob ross <laughs> All right, I'm just putting in the chat how to submit your paintings when you're done to be included um, in our reveal next week, Friday. There are uh, two options. Just getting them in the chat here. Um, Sarah, just, just a question while you're painting. Um, yeah. you, know, you know your focal point, you've got it off to the left. Um, which I think really works. And obviously you've used artistic license to sort of move that around from the, the image you're painting from. Is it always better to put the focal point to one side or the other rather than in the center? Does it make the painting more interesting? <laughs> yes, good question. Um, the short answer is yes. <laughs> okay. Just slightly off centre usually, but it does depend on the painting because sometimes there are some paintings that warrant a kind of symmetrical composition. Yeah. But generally yeah. speaking, you know, if you use the the photography rule of thirds as a as a guideline, that you're not going to go too far wrong. Okay. But there's Thank always you. exceptions to the rule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the colours are just gorgeous, beautifully coming together. I'm not trying to kind of cover every inch of that background, A, because I haven't got time, and B, because like the little bit of orange that's showing through is kind of nice, gives it a... Yeah, sometimes you don't have to obliterate everything that you've done before. Right, yeah. But equally, equally, if you put something down and, it, and it's kind of wrong, it doesn't, it's not the end of the world with acrylic because you can quite often come back to it and then find there's something when you when you paint over it it produces some a nice unexpected result and mm -hmm. absolutely you know that's the the joy of painting is kind of this adventure where you anything can happen <laughs> <clears throat> yeah and and you know trying not to be to get too het up if it you know generally i don't ever really start with a with an outcome in mind hmm. i i tend to um just have a starting point we we'll never know where it's going to go yeah pink do you um 
is that always or do you sometimes sketch or plan out or do you generally go with no, the I just I have a starting point so I have sketches so like these sketches which I photocopied from my sketchbook okay these were from these work back there's a whole there's four pages of my sketchbook oh nice that was just literally going to the beach with a small pocket sketchbook that's about that size and a pen nice. and that's it <laughs> um that's awesome. again keep it simple Mm -hmm. you go out with loads of paraphernalia by the time you've lugged it all over the place you've set mm -hmm. up and then you haven't got time to do anything uh, and I find that if you just keep it simple you can get down a lot of information quite quickly and that combined with photographs you can um and then I kind of use all of these things as reference so I'm looking at all of these things at the same time and just taking bits from each mm -hmm. um so that is my starting point, but I don't know what the end point's going to be. It's not, it's not going to look like any of these. That, and that's the fun of it. You just like see what happens. Will you often re revisit a, a reference photo uh, painting, revisit it a few times? Some, yes, yeah, sometimes. If it's, uh, again, you know, this is my local beach, so mm. it's a subject that I'm could come back to over and over usually because I'm usually working from multiple references uh I never end up with two paintings the same yeah I, I think it's pretty hard to do that <laughs> it would be so you don't need to worry about you know you can use the same reference photo over and over and uh, and interpret it completely different each time mm. Uh, the second image on the wall is your previous painting, is that right? <clears throat> yes. So. Whereabouts do you live, Sarah Jane? Uh, I live in Pembrokeshire which is on the west coast of Wales in the UK. Wow. <laughs> so I'm on the edge of the Atlantic and I'm very lucky to be here because it's a national park. Mm. Most beautiful it's, place in the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we might be biased, Phil. But... <laughs> yeah. Where's your local beach, Sarah? Which is that you're painting? Uh, this is White Sands, White Sands I Bay. Thought it, I, thought it, I thought it was. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> wow. I was in there on the I was in there on the second of January. It didn't look as warm as that. <laughs> no. Yeah, I went in on Boxing Day and on New Year's Day for a swim. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cold. Yeah. Okay, I'll switch to a smaller. I'm finally going down a brush side. <laughs> okay, there's a half inch. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's the other thing about brush size. Who else gets confused about brush sizes? Because every manufacturer, every make, has a completely different brush set of brush sizes. So what's a size 10 in one size is completely different in another make. Hmm. Yeah, oil brushes have numbers, right? Not, not uh, measurements, I think. Yeah, but all the manufacturers are different. So, yeah. so like I say, if, you, if you've got a size 10 in that size and a size 10 in another make, right. Sorry, in a in in make different makes, they'll be quite often completely different sizes. So <coughs> kind of better if you if you know what if it's a half inch or an inch or a 
Yeah. Um, well, I just go with small, medium, and large. <laughs> 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 and having lots of different brushes, you can just play about with. Yeah. But these are the ones that I use most often. Right. Sarah, because we're painting and the palette view is so small, can you call out the colors that you're mixing? I'd, I'm especially interested in the warm and cool choices that you make for this. Thank yeah. you. Um, I'll try to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I think the blues are a bit confusing because they're so close together. Um, so I'm just I'm going back to get make some more dark. So I'm using ultramarine because it's a darker pigment and the um, burnt umber just to make a little pile of. But I've got more more ultramarine in there so that it's a bit bluer to try and get some of the shadow side to the rocks. which you might not be able to see on the camera. I don't know if you can see the difference in the, on the camera. Yeah, you can see that, it's fine. Thank you. And I'm guessing everybody has the luxury at home of taking a bit more time. And yeah. Not speed painting like you are, you have to <laughs> <laughs> does feel a bit like. Yeah, it's intense. You're doing great. It's, it's stunning. Uh, the recording of this will be on YouTube. We have a channel, Master has a channel on YouTube. I uh, should be there later today, uh, definitely by tomorrow. I'm just putting in some smaller marks here and there as well, because it's very easy, I think, as human beings, we can't help ourselves but try to make sense of things. Mm -hmm. and if you're re not really mindful, you end up making all your rocks the same size. <laughs> and so you kind of end up with a pattern or, or not just the same size, but then maybe equally spaced or all in a line. <laughs> and you just do it automatically. So you have to kind of really like make a point of making sure that things are Resist the random energy. as they are in nature. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. I'm gonna... For your mentorship group starting next week, do you have um, a focus or a specialty that you're focusing on or are you uh, kind of gonna follow the whatever the needs of the artist. I'm gonna, well, I'll s again, see what the, the needs of the group are. But I think um, generally my theme, my kind of mode of painting is just kind of, I think painting, it's my belief at least, that painting or learning to paint is 20% skill and techniques and, you know, having a bit of a knowledge about the colors you're using and the equipment you're using. And all of that is probably 20% of a successful painting and the other 80% is here. Yeah. It's, it's mindset and it's mm -hmm. how you approach it. And it's about just being able to sort of let go and have fun and make experiments and be prepared to make mistakes, you know, that, um, you know, you can't learn anything 
by getting it right all the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't need to learn anything. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, and then uh, nobody, nobody kind of picks up a violin for the first time and expects to play Mozart. So why do people expect to mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. and be able to make a masterpiece straight? Oh, you know, yeah. it's it's a process of learning and experimenting and making a mess and and having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And and so it, I guess that's my thing really is yeah trying to help people get over their own mind talk yeah yeah because we all we can all be you know self-critical about things aren't we you know that we're not familiar with you know I don't I don't have that issue with painting but with something else I might sort of lack confidence and um yeah it's just about finding ways to finding ways to get out of your own way <laughs> We are so hard on ourselves. It's so yeah. true. So true. Oh, it's too dark now. I'm gonna make this take a bit of magenta now and mix a bit of this. I'm making a kind of dark purple. Mm, beautiful. That was magenta and one of the blues. It's the the dark mix that I had here. The, okay. The blue. So it's a, a bit of the ultramarine, a bit of the burnt umber, and a, and a bit more magenta to make it more. Mm -hmm. It's not too in your face purple, but <laughs> I could desaturate that a bit more, put a bit more burnt umber in. I've already let go of the image. <laughs> Can I take a little bit of white? Um, sorry, Sarah, me again. Um, I heard something today somewhere, um, who knows where, I can't remember, but the foreground is always harder to paint than the distant ground, um, because I guess you tried to show more detail in the foreground. Um, is that probably a correct statement? Um, oh. Yes, maybe. <laughs> I guess it depends what you're it depends what you're trying to paint and it depends where your focus is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very um Sorry, that's the dog a, dog. a mistake that I see a lot of beginners make is that they try to put as much detail and focus everywhere. Yeah. And you know that's not how we see. We we focus either on the distance or in the foreground. And everything else becomes blurry depending on where our focus is. So if you try to paint, you know, and cameras, that's the limitation of cameras, is cameras that can kind of record every detail, background, foreground, <laughs> everywhere. Um, and we don't really, we, that's not the way that we experience the world. We, we can't take that much information in all at once. Um, I'm just using a bit of cerulean here and some white. There's, Cyan, I'm using, sorry. Just going to get some of this kind of fresher blues in. One thing I forgot to mention is um, for next week's reveal of everyone's paintings, we do have prizes. 
Uh, we're a non-competitive community, so we don't pick best paintings. Uh, we do a random draw for one um, non-member would get a one month events membership. We do a live event like this every week with our community, uh, with our mentors. And so that will be a giveaway. And then for one master's member, we'll give away a master's painting apron, uh, just so you know. Is that lemon yellow I'm seeing? That's lemon yellow, yeah. Just want to lighten this up a bit. I have about eight minutes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just using a bit of just a tiny, tiny dot of magenta. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just to make it sort of peachy. Right. Tiny dot more. <laughs> Mm, beautiful. So, like, if this is still a bit wet, unfortunately, <laughs> if um, when you kind of got your dark shapes in, even though they're a bit rough and ready, um, it's it's easy to kind of put in a big rough shape and then use a lighter color because white mixed into anything is going to make it opaque. Mm -hmm. You can use that to kind of carve in to make use of the kind of use the negative shapes almost or the to kind of sculpt into the rock shapes. Are beach scenes a favorite for you, Sarah Jean? Yeah, beach scenes and waves and just the coastal landscape, really, because that's what is around me. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, because it's National Park, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty special. Mm -hmm. It's Britain's only coastal national park where I live. So. <laughs> Very lucky. Can you walk to it or is it a drive? I can, yeah. Nice. I can see, well, from outside the studio, I can see the sea. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and I could walk to the coast in about five minutes from here and from home as well, about 10 minutes from home. Mm. So uh, I don't know if you can see what I'm kind of just using using the brush in different directions. It's just kind of implying texture and I'm trying to just keep moving the brush around and, and placing color so that it ties into each other. And this is White Sands Beach. What's the name of the national park? The Pembrokeshire Coast National Park. Pem Pembrokeshire. <laughs> Pembrokeshire Coast National Park. Um, 
Let me get some of that. If you have any more questions for Sarah Jean, now is your chance. We have four minutes. Ah. <laughs> oh, that white line, that really, that's probably not white, but it's not really. It's not white, it's, it's quite gray. If mm -hmm. I put white in, I'll just do it on a clean brush just to show you the... Mm. I don't know if you can see that, how, how much whiter that is. Yeah, yeah. It's really lovely. You don't want to use white right back on the horizon because otherwise it will just pull it forward too much. Yeah. Just putting it in the chat again, our email address for uh, if you want to submit your painting to be part of the reveal next week, Friday is socials at masters.com or post, post it on Instagram uh, with the hashtag masterious painting challenge, all one word. And I'll post it in there too. Check the spelling. And then Ginger uh, will, a uh, gal on our team will collect them all up. And then uh, Sarah Jane and I will come back here next week, same day, same time. <laughs> and we're going to look at everyone's artwork. It's going to be awesome. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll do this again as well, just for fun, yeah. with a bit more time. <laughs> I know it's hard when time's a crunch. It, it's uh, when you're trying to do a lot in a short space of time and think about it and talk about it. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. That is a challenge. <laughs> you're doing smashingly. Um, oh, uh, Roberta shared wearing my master's apron that I won at a painting challenge draw. That's awesome. Hey! But, yeah, they're really lovely. Um, and a question came in. Uh, what is the best color to add to white to make it sing, or does it depend on the scene? The best color to add to white? Yeah, to make it sing is the question. <laughs> well, to make anything sing, you want contrast, because mm. human beings are drawn to areas of difference. You know, if you, um, if you have a line of trees that are all the same height on a horizon and there's one that's taller than the other one that's the one you notice mm. we're hardwired to notice differences and variants so um anything that is different and the more different it is the more it will pull the attention so if you've got a really light color against a really dark color that will pull the attention if mm. you've got um, a complementary color against another complementary that will pull the attention mm -hmm. so, it's points of difference. So if you're using white, the answer is black. <laughs> but um, obviously in, in the context of a painting, there's a lot of nuances. Yeah. You know, it's just, um, but generally speaking, if you put white, if you're mixing colors and you put white into, um, into any other color, it's going to make it more, it's gonna desaturate it. Mm -hmm. So the colour won't pop when you're mixing because white's opaque. Right. That's a whole other. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> that's a course in itself. Well, we are yeah. at the we are at the hour, Sarah Jane. Okay. Beautiful painting. Um, before we let everyone go, can you give us one bit of advice or encouragement as we tackle this painting this week? Uh, have fun with it and don't be frightened of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just. Um, yeah, obviously I've kind of <laughs> just stop painting. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>
um you know it's uh, it's because there's there's lots of bits and pieces and because I was trying to get everything in to show you at least something on the camera by the end yeah but as as you go you know I think it, it's a value to work fast and loose um you know maybe it's good for everybody to have a time constraint mm -hmm. and, and just use a couple of brushes so that you don't overthink everything yeah and just and just you know attack it and see what happens and if you're using acrylic then you know if it goes horribly wrong just let it dry and come back come back over it with you know um, um and just try to keep the the colors kind of clean and separate and um yeah and then and then once you've kind of got everything with the values relating to each other so you feel like you've got a sense of space mm. you know and now it's starting to look like a beach scene then you can start to refine details and to to come back in with shadow colors and reflection colors and you know build up more detail and more more nuances mm. yeah. but I think you know don't get to that too soon you know yeah work with big brushes and get the relationships right first mm. get things in the right place and the sense of receding and get your perspective sorted out you know th that's the time to do all that early on mm -hmm. and then and then you can worry about the details afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, resist the details until the yeah. end, I know. Yeah, so I've done this whole painting of these two brushes. Yeah, um, that's awesome, so, thank you. So far, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. apart from this one where I just did that little bit of white. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. so. Oh, thank you, Sarah Jane, this is lovely. Very helpful, thanks for the encouragement. There's lots of comments coming up. Uh, lots any questions or yeah i think we got them all okay just, just a big thank you loved it <laughs> nice to hear a friendly voice yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we had about 66 uh artists on the call so yeah nice wow, that's amazing. then we'll, we'll um, see you next week Sarah. Now I'm looking on the camera, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. That's a good trick also. Just if, you, if you're not sure where you're going, just have a look at your painting through through your phone lens, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. it just condenses it down and it, it makes it easy to spot things that are jumping out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, we'll see everyone who wants to join in uh, for next week's reveal. Uh, same place, same time, yeah. same link. And we will look at everyone's work, send it to socials at masters.com or on Instagram, hashtag masters painting challenge, all one word. And we will see you next week. Okay, hope Thank everybody you. enjoyed it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah Jane. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. Okay. Okay, bye everyone. Have a good bye day. everybody wherever you are in the world. <laughs>